The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, State of Hawaii Department of Transportation on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 37471. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks. These are intended for direct pull 6,000 pounds. Moving up to the face of the front bumper, you'll find an air horn located on the passenger side. Directly in the center, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Just to the right of that location in the image, you'll find your mechanical siren. As we move up onto the bumper extension on the passenger side, you'll find your front bumper turret. Moving over to the driver's side, you'll find a tubbed storage location for hose storage and also a two and a half inch discharge. As we move up onto the cab face, you'll find on the outer edge, marker turn indicator lights. Just inside that location, you'll find your headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. As we move further up, you'll find emergency warning lights forward facing. Moving to the outer edge of the A-pillar, you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. As we move up to the center section, you'll find a forward-facing camera. This is part of your 360-degree camera system. Just above that, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. Up onto the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five ID clearance lights. On the roof, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. And then just above that light bar, you'll find your go lights, which are your controlled spotlights from within inside the cab area. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups of the items that we just talked about. First, let's start with the bumper extension. The front bumper turret does have a cab lift safety interlock. As we move over to the opposite side, you'll find your front discharge, dry deck material, Velcro tie-down. As we look now to the side of the vehicle, you'll find your front discharge. These are the drains for that front discharge. Also a visual sight gauge in the front axle. Moving to the midsection area, you'll find a fold out running board. Also you'll find the location for your storage for your folding wheel chocks. To the very rear, you'll find a side facing winch installment location with electric 12 volt access. Also, as we move to the front door area, you'll find a keypad for gaining access into the vehicle. Lower zone emergency warning lights. Water tank level LED indicators. And at the very top, a side facing camera. As we move to the rear body section, you'll find upper emergency warning lights. And right next to those is where you'll find your side facing floodlights. Let's go ahead and take a look at the front cab area. Down in the lower portion is where you'll find the negative and positive jumper cable studs. As we look now to the midsection and pump panel, we'll move through the rest of the vehicle. This is the body section. Then on to the rear of the apparatus. Moving around to the passenger side, full view. Next will be the body section, same configuration and layout, and then the front cab area. Let's go ahead and move into the cab area on the driver's side. First, let's start with the door panel. Affixed to the door panel is where you'll find all of our safety and warning placard information affixed to the polished stainless steel. As we move upright, you'll find window control and electric door locks. Moving further up, you'll find the door lock latch and also lock. Let's move to about the left knee of the operator where you'll find your audible alarm, driveline diagnostic information, command zone, diagnostic information, 
and also your display information. Let's move back to the yellow placard located here, which houses information regarding the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, all of the fluid capacities and fluid component type, and also fluid amount. Let's move to the dash area. We'll start on the left with the ignition switch. Moving to the left, you'll find a yellow indicator indicating the height of the vehicle, length, and gross vehicle weight rating. As we look to the gauges themselves, on the left, you'll find the water temp, tachometer, and speedometer. As we move down to the bottom, you'll find transmission oil, fuel level, def level, front air, rear air, and volts. As we move all the way to the very far right side, you'll find tally information regarding your vehicle status. The height of the vehicle, 10 feet, 9.5 inches. Length, 33 feet, 11.5 inches. Gross vehicle weight rating, 53,800 pounds. Let's take a general view here just to the right of the operator space. Let's start first with some switch panels, starting on the left with passenger's window control, driver's side window control, passenger side window control. Heat, defrost, and air conditioning control, engine brake on and off, settings for the engine brake for low, medium, and high, DPF regen, this allows you to actively start your DPF regen, DPF regen inhibit, this will stop the regen, and then also a sensor for your front airbag. Stationary OK to pump and roll is an indicator, your water pump switch, foam switch, pump and roll switch, and the open tank to pump valve closed switch. Let's move toward the center section where you'll find your command zone, touch screen, and also function buttons. Moving down, you'll find your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release, and also the control module for your go light. Allison transmission pad with an informational note to pump and drive along with generator operating instructions. At the floor, you'll find your air horn and mechanical siren foot pedals. Moving to the right, you'll find the view, which allows you to change the view perspective of your camera system, electronic siren, and PA speaker system. Main mirror control for left and right mirror. Also directly behind the driver's seat is where you'll find the air compressor. When plugged into shoreline power, this will be active. As we move from this location, a different angle here of the air compressor. Electronic door lock. As we move down to the front axle, Michelin tires, Alcoa wheel, and a visual sight gauge for your front axle. Let's move to the rear section of the cab area. First, let's start with the door panel, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, window control, and door lock. As we move inside the cab area, there are two rear-facing seats that house SCBA brackets and also two forward-facing seats with SCBA brackets. Push on and off white or red lens lamps overhead. These are the two forward-facing SCBA bracketed seats and also access. This is on the officer side for your daily checks for oil and transmission. On the opposite side of that is all your electrical breaker panel. In the very center of the rear, you'll find a roll-up EMS compartment. Your inverter is located down in the lower portion of this compartment. Overhead, you'll find the rear air conditioner control. As we move inside that EMS compartment at the very bottom section of that, you'll find an additional plug. This is a Shoreline inverter outlet. Moving from this to the side of each compartment side, passenger and driver, 12 volt access via USB and USB-C. As we move exterior at the top, you'll find backboard storage. You'll also find in the upper portion a two and a half inch crosslay. It is foam capable. As we move downward, you'll find two inch and a half discharges, also a warning placard indicating entanglement hazard. As we move to the pump panel, We'll start with two two and a half inch discharges. 
a warning placard indicating pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Also, your foam system fill, switch, and valve, and inlet. Also, a warning regarding foam failure. Do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam. As we move to the right, the driver's side auxiliary inlet, two and a half inch locally controlled ball valve, and also your main pump inlet on the driver's side. As we move to the very far right, you'll find a warning placard indicating when climbing onto the vehicle, always face it. And as we look down to the bottom, you'll find your air supply on and off and also a outlet. Across the bottom, all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's take a look at some close ups of those items. First, driver's side one and driver's side three, two and a half inch discharge. Air supply and air supply outlet. As we move further down, you'll find your foam switch for tank B, refill and fill location. Driver's side auxiliary inlet, two and a half inch. You do have a folding step that is connected to the do not move your apparatus if this is open. As we move to the pump panel, we'll start at the very top section. If you've properly engaged your pump, you should have this OK to pump light indicating. As we move to the left, you'll find the minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. Foam tank B. As we move to the gray module, you'll find your master intake gauge. Further to the right is the master discharge gauge. In between the two of those are the test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. Those are currently plugged and are utilized for testing pump purposes. To the right, you'll find the PCM fault visual indicator. Just beneath that, you'll find an audible speaker. The outer edge of that speaker bezel does rotate, so you can dampen the sound. Also, just below that, you'll find a pump heat visual indicator. Let's go back to the minimum operation maintenance schedule. Test pressures are located in the center, 150, 200, and 250 PSI. GPM for test pressures was located on the left and the RPM is located on the right. Five digit job number at the very top section with a governed speed while in pump mode 2130. As we move to the pump panel on the left, you'll find an electric valve controlling your front discharge. Cross lay one, two, and the two and a half inch cross lay are nestled together. Also the passenger side two and a half inch and large diameter discharge are located in the very center and are electric valves. You have a fire pump primer, push to prime air prime, at least 1,000 for best practices. The extender is for your master stream device to move it up out of the dunnage area. And your pressure throttle governor is located on the right, along with a water tank level indicator embedded in the pressure governor. As we move further down, you'll find the tank to pump. This is an air controlled valve. And then just beneath that, you'll find a recirculating line. Let's move down on the pump panel, identify a few more items. First, starting on the left with the tank fill and recirculating line. There is also informational instructions regarding your foam mate around the pump foam system. Also the deluge discharge and your foam mate discharge. Eductor, foam switch. When you're in the process of completing the foam process, open the flush valve and also turn the wheel to the entire flush position. Also a warning regarding only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment. To the right we have our two rear two and a half inch discharges. Moving further down we have a direct tank fill located at the rear of the apparatus. It is a two and a half and also a rear inlet. The direct tank fill should be utilized for foam operations. You have a primer at the rear and also your manifold and primer drain. There is also a visual door to gain access behind. We'll go over that in just a moment. And at the very bottom section, all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's go back to the pan door when we look inside. This is your manual pump shift override. As we move to the vertical wall surface, this is the control module that's fixed for your master stream device. As we move further down, you do have a switching panel for your air horn. 
Moving now to the bottom section, this is the storage location for your remote for the master stream device. As we move into the compartment, G1 stands for generated power. We do have a warning regarding electrocution hazard and then also your informational placard at the very bottom section. Let's move just under the vehicle where you'll find an additional front discharge. There are two, one at the bottom section of the two and a half and one toward the rear. As we move, we have SCBA bottle storage for four bottles. Also fill for our DEF, which is the blue cap. This is a 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. Once again, blue cap. As we move to the rear, you'll find the ultra low sulfur diesel fill location. Once again, Michelin tires, Alcoa wheel. As we move up, your tool board, when you gain access, will lock in the position. The release is located on the hinge side. Fill location for your ultra low sulfur diesel, once again, silver cap. Let's move now to the very rear compartment where you'll find a pullout tray and also a pullout floor mounted tray. The release mechanism for each of those is located on the right. Just underneath that outside of the vehicle is a direct pull 9,000 pound winch location with electrical 12 volt connection. All compartments are now open. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus. Let's start at the very top left with a emergency warning light and a floodlight rear facing. Directly below that, you'll find your hard suction hoses. There are two located. Also, you'll find long handled tool storage. As we move further down, 24 foot and 14 foot roof ladder storage location. Further down, you'll find your deck lights, rear scene lights, and hose bed light switches. And then all the way down to the bottom, you'll find your rear inlet. Let's move back to the center area where you'll find a warning regarding entanglement hazard because the line's coming from the hose bed area. We have two two and a half inch discharges, passenger side and driver side. You'll also find a direct tank fill. This is to be utilized during foam operations. Also some warning placards, pressure hazard, caps may be under pressure, be cautious when opening them. And in the very center, you'll find your backup camera, which is part of your 360 degree camera system. As we move to the very bottom compartment, this is the electrical cord reel rewind push button. And also on the very bottom, this is your junction box. Let's move back to the cord reel itself. It's 200 feet long and it is a 20 amp as we move to the electrical cord reel, this is GFI protected. The shelf on the very bottom tray does pull outward and does have a release on the lower right. Underneath the tailboard, you have a 9,000 pound allowable winch rating, also electrical 12 volt, and also your tow plug. In the upper right, you'll find a 10 foot attic ladder and additional long handle tool storage. There are two outlets on the back and also your shoreline inlet 20 amp auto eject plug. Full view of the passenger side of the vehicle, all compartments open. Let's start in the very rear with two trays located in this compartment, release mechanisms located on the right hand side. As we look just inside the compartment, you'll also find when plugged into shoreline power and inverter power, these four outlets are active. As we move to the lower section, winch location, and also rear inlet drains. This is the rear inlet drain and also air bleed. Moving just upward, you'll find SCBA bottle storage for four bottles, in addition with a pull out and tilt downward tray. As we move to the very bottom section, you'll find Michelin tires and Alcoa wheels. Moving upward, this is a removable SCBA bottle storage retainer. Close up here of the pullout tray that does tilt downward. As we move to the next compartment forward, you'll find two pullout straight trays on the bottom section and then also a pullout and tilt downward in the upper portion. You'll also find the rear inlet and manifold drain just underneath the running board area. Let's go ahead and move from this location to the very top where you'll find the two and a half inch crosslay foam capable. 
Moving down, you'll find two two and a half inch, also a warning placard regarding entanglement hazard. As we move to the passenger side pump panel, this is also the location of the cab lift. There are instructions for its operation, including some caution and danger placards. In addition, with a warning regarding always facing the vehicle while climbing onto it. Passenger side main inlet. As we move further down, you'll find your two and a half inch auxiliary inlet on the passenger side locally controlled ball valve. Also an additional warning placard here regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. This is the two and a half inch passenger along with an override due to it being an electric valve and your large diameter discharge on the passenger side with an override because it's an electric valve. At the bottom, all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. Some close ups here of the cab lift. Also as we move forward, you'll find passenger side number two and also the override in addition with a pressure warning hazard. This is the override for the large diameter passenger side. The tool is located in the compartments. This does have a fold out step. It is connected to your do not move your apparatus. As we move to the cab section next, let's go inside the cab area, fixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch and window control. As we move overhead, you'll find your push on and off white or red lens lights. Also on this side, a USB port for USB-C and USB, uh, USB style. As we move to the front axle, Michelin tires, Alcoa wheel and a visual sight gauge. Let's move now to the officer side of the vehicle and we'll go inside, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, electric window control and electric door locks. As we move to the front, your vehicle is equipped with frontal impact protection, supplemental restraint system and airbag. This is the storage location for your front bumper turret control remote. Also you'll find these candy cane wire indicators indicating that you have a wire behind the panel and the type of wire it is. Also siren brake, air horn, mechanical siren and electronic siren push buttons, 12 volt access via USB and USB-C and also barrel style. Vehicle data recording port. As we look overhead you'll find your go light control, a map light and then also a switch panel of memory brain switches. The membrane switches, as we look to the left here, does have one switch panel in it. It is for the front scene. Also, future switch locations can be added to this. As we move to the very center, you find your do not move your apparatus when this light is on, indicating you have a compartment door open or ajar. Also, position on your front bumper turret. In the center, you'll find your setcom intercom system and radio control module. Looking to the driver's space, we'll go ahead and start on the far left side with your emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, upper rear warning, cab beacon, which is your airport indicator, and a siren brake for the mechanical siren. As we move just to the right, you'll find an additional membrane panel, electronic siren, generator PTO, OK to engage the high idle, high idle switch, front scene, driver scene, passenger scene, and load manager. When any of these switch have been illuminated, you can see in this image, the green light will illuminate indicating it's on. You also have a digital pump pressure, water tank level, and foam level indicator. Unit identifier on the very top, 49, along with some do not walk on this area. This is a non-walking surface because it is slippery and does not have the appropriate handrails. As we move to the rear section in the dunnage area, let's start first with the front dunnage. This houses your master stream device, exhaust, and also the generator. As we move to the right, this is a hot shift PTO generator 6KW. can be activated at any time while the vehicle is in motion. As we move further to the back, on each side you have additional hatch compartments, LED lighting, ventilation, and also dry deck material in the very top section. 
As we move to the hose bed, there are two hose bed dividers located here. They are movable. Also the top fill location for your 750 gallon water tank. Also top fill location for your 100 gallon class B foam. I'd also like to point out a foam failure warning. As we move now through the dunnage compartments, we'll start now with the cab fully tilted. The next set of images are for your awareness under the cab and chassis area. Just as a reminder, when tilting the cab, fully execute the cab tilt. When it is fully in position and the lock has been placed into position, do not lower the cab back on to the hydraulic cylinders. Congratulations, State of Hawaii Department of Transportation airports on your new Pierce fire apparatus, job number 37471. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire Sales Representative. Thank you and congratulations.